Oh, it's a Japanese box thing. Boring. Nineteen eighty-two Toyota Starlet. Uh, okay, what should I say about this? Well, well, let's go to the Wikipedia page. Everyone knows Wikipedia is serious business. So yeah, this is it. Starlet sixty series, whatever. Let's look at the specs. Three to five door hatchback. FR layout. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> So forget everything you know about old cars or classic cars, the Starlet is light years away from the age when it was built. It's easy to drive and I mean easy, almost like a modern car. Of course the steering is very different, the brakes have nothing to do with modern cars, but everything else, the visibility, when, when you are moving the steering feels very light the gearbox is excellent you could really drive this car every day like the owner did for quite some time it's very easy to use of course you, you don't get too much safety measures but if that's not a thing for you well this is a good choice this city car was really ahead of its time for instance, today you have your Audis and Volkswagens bragging about aluminium trim pieces. Look, look! Toyota already had aluminium trim in the early 1980s. And it isn't all just aesthetics. The pedals, for instance, are really well positioned, with enough space for your shoes, and the clutch is nice and not heavy. Just because it's easy to drive, don't even think for one moment it isn't fun. This is one of the most exciting cars I've ever driven. It's rear-wheel drive. And that means that when you go through corners, you really feel <laughs> that rear axle dig in. So, besides being a great, easy to maneuver city car, it's also fun and exciting on a B road. There is some body roll, but I guess you can expect that in a car from the 80s. People talk about body roll like it's a bad thing, but. If you don't get some body roll, you could actually end up having lift off oversteer and you don't want that in a rear wheel drive car. There are some downsides to the 60 series Starlet. The chassis is short, so the suspension is somewhat shaky, as you probably noticed in the cabin footage. But the seats are surprisingly comfortable. The rear hatch opening doesn't go all the way down. Oh, and there are no seat belts in the rear seats since they weren't obligatory. It's also very difficult to find one of these with no modifications and in good condition. This one was about to be scrapped before the current owner managed to acquire it. The steering wheel may be somewhat thin. If you have big hands, it may not be as comfortable. But for me, for me, it's not too bad. All the controls are really easy to use. The instruments are easy to read. The controls for the heater may be more difficult to use because they are right here behind the steering wheel. But it won't be too bad. You're not going to be using them as much as the other ones. 
the way I see it, if you want to buy a cheap rear wheel drive car, you only really have two options, this or the E36 3 Series BMW. This is really fun to drive, you can see actually the hood bulges with the, where the headlights are, so you're not going to crash this into benches or uh, poles or anything like that on your maneuvering. Overall visibility is just great, despite the, the rear view mirror shaking a little bit. <laughs> the engine sound, it's not deafening, like a uh, of course there is not too much sound insulation, but you could live with this every day, it's not annoying, it's not deafening. This is my take on it. If what you require from a car is reliability, fuel economy and small and practical dimensions, the 60 series Toyota Starlet is the best choice. If you find one, give it a try, you will be surprised. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe now to my channel so you don't miss any new video. Don't forget to like and leave a comment. For more updates follow Daily Driver Reviews on Facebook. I will see you next time.